uh, I think it was in, uh, must have been 81, that I got a call from Carlton Turner, who was the head of that, and later became uh, Reagan's advisor on drugs. <laughs> and he's not, not a bad guy, Carlton. I must admit, he, he, uh, he, did, uh, he did testify before uh, the political bureau in, in Mississippi about decriminalizing marijuana and, and really lessening, lessening uh, you know, the, uh, the penalties for, uh, for possession. So anyway, and he later actually quit the Reagan administration because he couldn't take their, their drug policies. But he called me up one day and he, he said, listen, well, we've been hearing about this stuff, this uh, sense of metal stuff, right? In California, the sense of metal stuff, and it's supposed to be really strong. And uh, the best stuff we have here tested at 6.5% uh, THC, and it came from Humboldt County. And he said, uh, you think you could round some of that stuff up and, and send me some samples with the seeds? I said, sure, Carlton, no problem. Well, you know, he's calling me up, I think it was like January or February, you know, where obviously there's nothing is growing then, right? Yeah. So, so I just went to my last year's uh, harvest from, from my greenhouse. And what I used to do is I would uh, grow all these different varieties and I would seed a branch or so or, or a selected buds on each plant. And then over the winter, I would smoke that along with a number of friends. I would give them number joints, and they would give me a report on, on the, the quality and the high. And then I would select <laughs> what, to be a friend of Mills. <laughs> what one from that, what mother I would plant for that variety the next year. I and mean, this is how I went about my, my breeding program, which was incredibly successful. That simple way was very successful. Anyway, so all I had was I had, you know, the seeds and the dregs from the bud that the seeds came in. So I just rounded up a bunch of that stuff and sent it to him along with a series from a Mexican variety that I had taken a different sample each week because I wanted to trace the THC rise and fall. So I never told him that, I just included that right in, in there. And uh, he gave me a report on it. First of all, he called me up one day and he said, he said, uh, is this, uh, he says, you can vouch for all this stuff. And I said, what do you mean vouch for it? He says, well, he says, he says, none has been like adulterated or anything, right? There's no like hash oil or anything like that on any of this stuff. I said, oh, no, absolutely not. I can vouch for every single one of them. It's, it's all just, it's just seeded buds. That's all it is. So okay. He says, I said, why? He says, because some of these are testing really high, right? Well, at the time, it won't sound so high now, but at the time it was, it was very high. Uh, and, and especially under this system of testing, which tended to test things much lower than what was going around at the time. They tested between uh, 7 and about 12 percent THC. Oh, nice. right. The Mexicans tested consistently around 7 percent, but the other ones were all like... And what kind of Mexican was it they were testing? Was it Mexican shipment that they would get, or were they going to get a really nice bud from Oaxaca and test it? Well, is it this crap that they well, see, bundle they, up and ship off to North America? Well, that's or, that's the thing. I mean, further north. The reason why you always had to grow the pot uh, when you're doing a breeding program at that time, the reason you had to grow it yourself was because the handling of it, of the commercial pot coming from Mexico or Colombia or, or anywhere else, Africa, was so terrible yeah. that most of the THC had already dissipated yeah. at CBN. Totally right. degraded. Totally degraded. Some put you to sleep. So what we found, in fact, just testing it, uh, I know for a fact that stuff that would test for like 4% THC that we would get Colombian seeds for, if I grew it, I could get like 8 9% THC out of it just because it was fresh and it hadn't been dumped on the ground, you know, dried in the sun, rolled around, crushed and all that other stuff. So that doesn't necessarily mean your technique or or anything increased the THC, but no, just absolutely not. It was just increased fresh. the potential of getting what the plant right. could but get. But the only this is the thing. The only way you could tell if you had a good good strain or not was to grow it yourself. So, so when were the did the indica come into your world? The indica came in. Uh, I would say as soon as I got to California, uh, maybe 76, 76, 77. Now this made a huge difference to the 
possibility of an earlier harvest, shorter Absolutely. plants, many different This is differences. something that we look for all the time was early, early flowering. And then, you know, as we became known because of the uh, deluxe guide, growers from other parts of the country would come and visit us. Besides uh, myself, I used to go out and photograph all the time. But, uh, you know, I, uh, a number of people from Arkansas came up, you know, they had, they were growing at that time big farms because they would, they were growing like 100 pound lots. In California, they were growing like 40 pounds was a good size uh, plot then, you know. So uh, then, uh, and they would bring their Afghanis too because they, they had the same problems. Uh, the, the thing is, most of them weren't very good. Right? The Afghani one I got from another grower and then kind of developed it. Right? Uh, the Afghani one is basically what you see as Afghani one now from the Netherlands and everywhere else came from that original stock years right. later. Right. Anyway, yeah. So then you were in, in and around the development of some of the most earlier hybrids with, you know, in the nor Northern California. Well, like that, that was something that came later. Uh, I had a, I have a friend who uh, was in California at that time, was a very good breeder, very conscientious, and he was working on hays, which had already been something he had gotten from other growers, but he cons consistently grew it, trying to get it, you know, to, to, uh, to be, be the, the best it could be, right? Yeah. <laughs> and also skunk one. So uh, at, I think it was in 83 or 84, he got busted for the second time. He was a married man with two kids, two young kids, and uh, needed to leave the country. He just said he couldn't live here anymore. He couldn't do what he did, which was grow dope. So he uh, moved to Amsterdam and needed a way to get started there. And he came by and asked me if I would give him a couple of... Uh, Pure strains of you know good stuff, and I gave him uh, German poison, which I thought was one of the best things I ever did. And uh, very Afghani nice. Marijuana. one, and he took skunk number one, Afghani one, Hayes, and Durban poison to Amsterdam, which basically started the entire seed breeding thing. It absolutely did. <coughs> anyway.